I got a story to go to hide. I was a blind man wandering until I saw the light. Yeah, I got a story I can't deny. I'm a living, breathing miracle, and I just gotta testify. Here we go. Welcome back to New Hope Junior Youth and the last session for the book of Luke. We've been studying it together since Christmas and many of you have now read the whole book of Luke for yourself. Well done. Leaders, take a moment and have anyone in your group who finished reading the whole book of Luke share one of their favorite parts and why it was their favorite. Today, we get to the very best part. What we celebrate together every Easter Sunday, in fact, what we celebrate as Christians every Sunday. Let's review the story so far. We've been looking at the story of Jesus as it's told in Luke's gospel. It begins with the arrival of an unlikely king born in poor, humble circumstances. Then we saw Jesus as a teacher, prophet. He went throughout Israel calling people to a radical way of life, where enemies become friends, the poor are cared for, where people find forgiveness for their failures. He went from town to town inviting people to follow him and live under God's reign in this upside down way. And he did many signs and wonders. So many Israelites began to hope that he would rescue Israel from the Romans and set up a new kingdom of peace and justice. In short, that he would bring the kingdom of God. Now the religious leaders of the day were also hoping for God's kingdom. But to them, the message of Jesus was a threat. Yeah, they had expected to gain power and prestige when this all went down. But Jesus said God's kingdom belongs to the poor, to the outsider, and that real power is serving others in love. This conflict intensified when Jesus, while in Jerusalem, disrupted the temple sacrifices and called Israel's leaders a gang of rebels. So they arrested Jesus and they had him accused before the Roman authorities of being a rebel king. He was handed over for execution even though he was innocent. Then he was taken outside the city and put to death on false charges. This brings us to the final section of the Gospel of Luke. This is where we ended last week. Jesus was crucified. Let's pick up the story at the end of chapter 23. Follow along in your Bibles, starting at verse 47. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, raised again? Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. If you had to use one word to describe how every human in this section was feeling, what would it be? Now, Don't just imagine how they might have felt. Look at the text. What words does it use? What does it say? What do the disciples say and do? Don't say anything out loud. I want everyone to write it down. Leaders, don't anyone share yet, uh, including yourselves, until everybody's had a chance to write down what was the main feeling everybody was kind of having in this section. They were wondering, they were confused. It seemed like nonsense. 
Jesus had told them many times what would happen, and seeing the empty tomb, they still didn't really get it. This might be exactly where many of you are. Maybe you've been hearing about these things your whole lives and you've always thought you understood them, but now as you get older and you're really starting to think about them for yourself or you're, you're reading the Bible for yourself, you're starting to wonder things like, but how would Jesus' sacrifice actually pay for my sins? How would it take the cup of wrath for me? How does that, that work? And, and what do all these things mean? And does this really make sense? And, and you're starting to wonder, do I, do I actually know and understand and believe these things? Hmm, maybe for whatever reason, you're feeling today like the disciples wondering, maybe a little confused, what really happened 2000 years ago and what does it mean? Do you feel now or have you ever felt like the disciples did? A little confused, a little bit wondering, but wanting to know more? Leaders, why don't you share an example first of a time you felt like this? One of my favorite things about Luke's account is how he records all these stories of Jesus helping his disciples understand what it all means. Even though he had been teaching them, living with them for years, he takes time after he rose from the dead to help them put it all together. Leaders, pause the video and have some people in your group read 24, 13 to 35, and have some people in your group read 24, 36 to 49. Perhaps you can have one leader help with each of these texts and pair them up into little groups of twos and threes to look at this text or this text. And then in your little groups, talk about these three questions. What were the disciples thinking before Jesus spoke with them? What did Jesus explain to them and how? And how did the disciples react? Now have kids from each of the two different passages share. They can summarize the story, have someone explain what Jesus did and have someone else explain how that helped the disciples. You can pair up a mini group that read this passage and this passage and put them together, or you can have this whole group speak and this whole group speak, leaders, whatever you think is best. When Jesus broke the bread, then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. After they ate the fish, then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And in both cases, he had a Bible study with them. Man, I really would have loved to be in both those Bible studies. I wish I could have been a part of that. Jesus traces the story of the Bible with his disciples and shows how it's all a story about him. He goes through the Old Testament, the law and the prophets, all of it, showing how it tells about him. But it's not just the intellectual head knowledge that he helps them understand. That isn't enough. He, Jesus, needs to open their mind, open their eyes, and he does this supernaturally, allowing them to see and understand. Maybe some of you have felt something like this. You know, you're a church kid, you grew up going to church, and you can think back to a few times maybe where something just clicked, where it started to mean something to you and the faith that you'd been learning about became your faith. Maybe you're new to all this, to junior youth, but you've had some of these moments where all of a sudden something clicked. Something felt like, huh, God loves me. That changes everything. Jesus really rose from the dead and that changes everything. And I'm sure many of you want to believe. You want all this to be true, but you're just not there yet. You want it to be true that Jesus really wants you and loves you and would go seeking and finding you. You want it to be true that he invites you into the party, invites you to the kingdom, no matter what you do. But you can't quite get your head around it yet. You can't quite yet believe you can ask him, Heavenly Father, if you're real, would you show yourself to me and help me understand? Just a simple prayer like that, you can pray every day for a week or a month. And either he's not real and then you've just spent a quiet moment in your own mind, which science tells us is good anyway, or he's real and he will reveal himself to you. Maybe you'd like to pray with someone else about that today. You can ask your leader to pray with you and pray that Jesus would reveal who he is to you. Here's one final question. What did you notice about what Jesus was like 
physically like after he arose from the dead. Yes, in at least one of these cases, he just appears, but read closely. What was his body like? Point to the verses as you talk about it. Jesus had a real physical body. He ate food. Jesus' resurrection is a literal, real resurrection. When we talk about Jesus rising from the dead, it's not a metaphor. It's not about how good will triumph over evil or light will triumph over darkness. It's a real historical event that really happened 1990 years ago. Either Jesus really rose from the dead, defeating sin, meaning that everything he taught was true, meaning that we can trust the Bible in everything he teaches, or he didn't really rise from the dead. And all of this is for nothing. Jesus' resurrection is the real historical event that our faith is based on. It's not based on a set of teachings. It's not based on a good way to live. It's based on a historical event that either happened or it didn't. And if you've been coming to junior youth a while, or maybe you grew up in the church and you're like, man, I don't know if Jesus rose from the dead. This is the most important question you will ever consider in your life. You need to figure out what you believe about this question and then take the leap and trust him as your Lord. What Jesus resurrection body is like tells us what our resurrection body is going to be like when Jesus returns and brings heaven and earth reuniting in the new heaven and the new earth. But the, the amazing thing is the new life in Christ can start right now through his spirit working in and through you. Let's keep reading in verse 46. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. He promises to send his spirit to dwell in them and work through them. And he tells them that the good news will be preached to all nations. I want you to think of something you really love. Maybe like when you watched a new movie you really liked or there was a new video game or a new food and you loved it so much. When you find that new thing that you love, what do you want to do? If you really love something and you're excited about it, you want to tell everybody the good news. You want to tell them about it. You want to say, you got to watch this movie. It's so fun. Or you got to play this video game with me. It's so great. Jesus' disciples have the good news that the cup of God's wrath has been taken away and can be taken away from anyone, all people, Jewish or not Jewish. And Luke has been making this point all along. Everyone is welcome into his kingdom. Everyone is welcome into the eternal party with him. Younger brothers and older brothers, Jewish people and not Jewish people, rich people and poor people, people who grew up religious and people who didn't. If Jesus is your Lord, do you get excited, even if it's kind of scary sometimes, to share about him? Are you happy, excited when you see some of your friends maybe starting to open their minds up to Jesus? If that doesn't make you excited, you maybe need to think about if you really understand what the good news is. If you're not excited for people to receive it, you should pray and ask Jesus to show you why it's such good news and why you should be excited. Verse 50, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. They worship him. Now they get it after seeing his resurrection, after having him explain it to them, they get it. He is God. Jesus, this man they lived with and talked to and ate with is God himself and they were ready to worship him. Are you ready to worship him? Today, as you pray, maybe some of you need to pray, 
and ask Jesus to show himself to you. Maybe you want to believe, but you're not sure you do. Maybe some of you today know that Jesus is the Lord, that he rose from the dead, and you're ready to make him your Lord. You can pray and surrender to him as the king of your life. Your leaders can help you do that. And if Jesus already is your Lord, then take time to pray about the people that you should be excited about when you think about what if that person loved Jesus too. It might be scary to think about actually talking to them about Jesus or inviting them, but thinking about them receiving the good news of Jesus should fill you with joy and excitement. Think about that a little bit today as you pray.